solar on the roof now there's power running through it's not really what i do so it's wired by drew when you're building a bus power is a must girl power for your bus when you're building a bus girl Episode 12, here we go. Ride across this country into this starlight. 12,000 miles, turn back, do it again. No destination, it's just a journey. You were my lover and friend. Did you like my song? Yeah, it sort of sounded like something I've heard before. I have heard it in another episode. It was it was a take on a song that I heard once about a bus. Oh. The electrical version. Electrical acoustic version. Yes. This is episode 12, framing the windows, making the headboard, and running the wires throughout the bus. The biggest part of this week was starting our electrical system and wiring the bus. But before we started into that, we had to take on two smaller little woodworking projects at the beginning of the week. The first project was to frame out the windows. Now this can be a big, intricate job with shuttle buses. They are mostly windows, or at least there's more windows than a usual RV. They're big, they have strange angles. I like to frame out these windows in a similar way that you would see in a house, just really neat and kind of completely encased in the wood so that you don't see any of the furring strips or insulation. It makes it look very put together and homey, pretty much like you would see in a house. The edges of the shuttle bus windows are curved, so I like to cut little triangles and just put them in the corners. Nothing super fancy, you don't have to do anything crazy. I think that putting a little triangle in the corner really frames out the window, and it's a very, very easy solution. Just cut a triangle and screw it in there. framed out the bed window and the booth window. Also a little window that will go next to the booth. Our heater will eventually be there. So there's a little half window above that tabletop. I think that they turned out really well. It was a little probably half day job, but I think it looks very polished and put together. Yeah, it feels great. feels like you're looking out the window of your home and not so much out the window of a bus. The kitchen windows will get framed out after our countertop install. I like to do those at the end so that you can line everything up perfectly with the top of the countertop once it's installed. So that'll be coming up in a future video. Second this week was the headboard. I really struggled with what to do for this headboard. We really love the headboard that we have in our bus. We wanted to make it kind of like a statement wall and we're doing the same thing in this bus as well. Back in December, I think it was when we were building our own bus, I had no plan for this wall. I just started cutting scrap wood and gluing and nailing it on the wall. I had no plan. I just wanted to create whatever popped out of my brain and it turned out really well. It yeah. has this geometric art deco kind of style to it that I think we both really like yeah, those cool. styles. So for the new bus, I had the same plan of attack. I tried not to plan it out too much because I can get in my own head about it. So I just cut the headboard, laid it out on the table and tried to see what happened. I know I have seen photos of something similar to this on maybe Pinterest or Google and for the life of me, I cannot find the link to it. If I find it or you know, 
what the blog is, link it down in the comment section below so I can share it with everyone. I cut the piece of wood, laid it out on the table, and then just started using scrap wood, cutting it to different lengths and angles and lining them up. And then I would look at the whole thing and move a few pieces around, look at it again, move things, flip them until I got a pattern that I liked and thought looked really good and would go well in the space. This design has a lot of room within it. Our headboard in our bus is really tight. It's a bunch of slats going in different directions and triangles. This one has a lot of air and space within it. And I kind of like the feel that that gives because it is directly across from our closet doors, which have slats. This headboard goes up and down with larger, wider slats with bigger spaces between them. So I like the feeling that it gives. I think it's a statement wall and a headboard without being too busy. Yeah. I'm really happy with how this design turned out. And as soon as we installed it, it once again, changed the whole space. Yeah. It brings it to life. You know, it looks really cool. It's like you said, it's on the opposite side of, uh, doors, which are the vertical strips. It's sort of like a distorted reflection, but more interesting. It's cool. The last part of this headboard was to use a flexible paintable caulk and go along all the seams of each little slat just to make sure that there's no gaps. When we paint, it'll be seamless and look as good as it can look. For this week's main event, time to wire the bus. This is probably phase two of the whole power thing. We did the solar last week. We'll be doing the actual power system next week. And this week was just about running all the wires. As with almost all of the electrical work, it's an incredible amount of prep work, really. You can do it as you go, and some you will have to, but it becomes really kind of messy. It'll still be messy even if you are prepared, as you'll probably see in these shots. Just a spider web of wires. Yeah. Progress report, how's it going? Well, I really don't know. Covered in wires and plastic tubing, so. This is me now. This is where I live. And there's a, bu a bee buzzing. There's a buzzing. Buzzing, buzzing. Going well, then. <laughs> Great. Loving it. So very quickly, the wire we used on this bus build was all stranded wire. It's a bit safer than a solid wire would be in a marine or automotive application where there's vibration or potential friction on the wire where you're not gonna have that in a solid still house. Uh, a solid wire could break and that could be a problem. The stranded wire is much more resilient, so definitely recommend that. It's also really nice to get the wire that is housed in an additional insulation. So for example, your DC wire, you have your positive and negative wires, but they will be in another coating of insulation. So you can just pull that through strip it back and get to the two wires, neater and safer. And with your AC wire, that's gonna be three wires in there. So that's your 12 three wire. As follows, we did 12 three wire for all of our AC outlets. And our DC, I did 14 gauge stranded to the distribution points like our switch panels. From there, I just did 16 up to the lights or to the water pump. Now the 14 is kind of overkill. Even some of the stuff doesn't even need 16, but it does get kind of annoying if you go any smaller than that. Like there's a, one of the light strips that I'm wiring in had 24 gauge in it. It's so, so hard to even wire it into like the 16. It's so tiny. Like how am I going to get this crimped onto these things? Yeah. So that's what we use. We 16, 14 for our DC stuff and 12, three for our AC stuff. So now that the bus is pretty much built, it was easier to go through and see where each outlet would be or a switch panel for lights would be. But once we knew where stuff needed to be, we went back in the bus, counted up our outlets. I believe we have seven AC outlets and then figured out where our switch panels would be for our DC lights and water pump, that sort of stuff and then measured the lengths as best we could with just a measuring tape to figure out what we needed to cut. So, okay, we have an outlet right by the door. That's a 110 volt. That's gonna be a 12 three wire. All right, how do we get it here and hide it? Measure that distance, 
and write it down. So okay, we need this outlet needs 33 feet of 12-3 wire. Made a list, try to be organized. It still gets messy, but it helps for sure. Once we had all that listed out, it was time to go out to the table and start measuring and cutting, preparing all these wires. And the big thing is label, 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 and label both ends of the wire clearly because you will get confused. But once you have all those measurements, you can take your list and kind of prep your wires. We know that our table is eight feet, so Drew would stand on one side of the table. I would run the wire as many times down the table to measure the length that we needed. We did that for all the gauges of the wires, labeled both ends, wrapped them, and piled them up so that once we got into the bus, things were more complicated, smaller space, everything's cramped. You could just grab the wires, run them through the conduit, and it wouldn't be quite as messy as if you were trying to measure out and run all the wires from the box or the spool inside the bus. With the lengths of the wires cut, we decided to prep the ends with wire connectors that we knew needed to go on the back of our distribution block. On our negative side, it's sort of the traditional block that you push the wire in and just screw it down. With the stranded, it can get messy, so it's nice if you put the ferrule on there to make one solid point of connection. So we did that for all the negative side. And on the positive side of the DC, it's got the wire connector that's sort of like the plug and play one where you plug it in. So we'll use our heat gun to put all those on. Once the wires were prepped with their appropriate connectors on each end, it was time to cut the conduit for each side of the bus. We pretty much have one piece of conduit upper and lower for each side. So we cut those lengths of tubing and then put each wire into the conduit. This can be really annoying and tedious to yeah. get each wire inside of it and make sure that it's coming out the end of the tubing for the correct length it can be tedious. We got all those in there and now they're protected. So when you put them through those little gaps in your wall, any vibration against the wood or metal, it's not gonna even touch the wire. So you got like multiple levels of insulation protection and then you wanna zip all this stuff into the wall. So you just use these clamps, screw it in. So the wire is nice and clean and held up. It's not gonna be able to move and that's just another safety precaution really. And it looks a lot better. A big part of this week was cutting all the holes for the outlets. The outlets that are inside of our cabinets didn't need any holes, they just mount outside of the wall. Mm -hmm. But the ones that need to be flush mounted with the face of a cabinet or wall, we had to go through and cut all of that. Our booth end looks like Swiss cheese now. The booth is Swiss cheese. There are so many holes in it because it's got outlet holes and it's got uh, obviously the door that opens on the front. It's got a big hole for the distribution block. It's got another hole for outlet there. Hold to let the wires in the back. Hold to let the wires out on the side. There's like almost no wood left on that. There's no holes through the frame of the actual structure, no. but the face panels are Swiss cheese now, yep. and they each get some kind of device, distribution box outlet mounted into it. Uh, essentially, it's the same thing that we did to our yeah. booth end. It looks fine in the end once it's painted and everything's mounted and put together, but it was kind of funny drilling all these holes into it. Oh, yeah. I need another one here. We need another one there. Get the hole saw out. <laughs> Now it was time to wire in all the switches and make sure our wires were run all the way around and then back to our distribution spot, which is under the booth. So next week when we get to the actual power system part, we are able to connect it and hopefully switch the lights on and everything will run first try. But first we had to get the outlets actually wired in. With the AC circuits, it's pretty self-explanatory. You run the three wires to the three appropriate spots on the outlet. As with the DC stuff, we have our 14 gauge running to rocker switches. So you wire that in and then off of that, you wire each switch to each thing. So up to lights, up to the water pump, and that can get a little bit messy, but as long as you have everything labeled really good and take your time, 
We like to use these five switch rocker panels and they are for automotive. They're made for cars because we absolutely hate all the switches made for RVs. They look like cartoon switches. Yeah. They're giant and they're plastic and we don't like how they look. So we went with this rocker panel. We found them when we were doing our own bus. And it's nice because you can put all the different light strips mm -hmm. or closet lighting or water pump. You can have them all on one panel. It's really clean looking if you had a light in here and you had a light in the back of the bus and a light here and they all on switches you'd have to run a wire to each of those from distribution where this you run one wire to the rocker switch so now that's got the power and from that you run shorter runs to everything instead of five wires coming all the way from distribution they're coming from this new little distribution center which is the rocker switch with all of our outlets and switches prepped, next week will be exciting once we actually put the power system in because as soon as we connect power to distribution, we should be able to turn everything on. We'll also be bringing in the solar wires from the roof to the charge controller. So it's kind of weird. We started on one end of the system and then did the other end. And next week we're gonna do the middle, which is where all the power is stored and generated and it's the it's the real real fun workhorse of the whole vehicle yes next week is power system part two the actual kind of brains of the power system the batteries all of that stuff so it's very exciting to be wrapping up the final part of the electrical yes. the bus is getting to the end stages here the electrical was a big hurdle that i was just anticipating getting done every week we have a lot of work to do yeah. to get this bus ready by the end of the month, but I think we can do it. There's a lot of visual changes coming up. We mm -hmm. are picking paint colors, doing countertops, finishing up the electrical and the propane. We got a lot to do. We got to get out of here. Yep, we got to get back at it. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching and do what you do, and we will see you very soon.